thing to continue to do is just to, to make things. Everything gets in the way of, of, of your ability to get into your studio and, and make work, or however you make work, right? Wherever that creative space, wherever you find yourself in that creative space. So, you know, eventually, if you continue to make things, you will be one of the very few people that continue to make things, which sounds really simplistic, but it's actually, I think, the hardest thing. The works in Accidental Vestiges all relate to one another in different ways, but they're not all of the same series. Okay. So the works in the what I would call the main gallery or your larger gallery, for the most part, are exploring similar issues where I'm combining um, cultural objects in still life format with deep time imagery, so kind of landscape and thinking about uh, the human in nature and also kind of Earth's evolution, like geological time, and there's strains of issues around climate change and things like that in the work as well. Um, the works in the smaller gallery are a little bit older, not much, just within the decade, but they are more in keeping with this kind of understanding of using um, cultural objects to represent either the individual or societies and almost a, a portrait of an individual or a society through objects. So um, they're really kind of cl more classic material culture issues. So I mean, I designed the furniture that holds the work and the table is really relevant within my work. Um, but it is also not only does it hold symbolism, but they are essentially props. So they like integrate these objects into a possible like kind of domestic realm, right? It alludes to domesticity. So um, you'll always find kind of table imagery within my work, even this kind of like this huge overblown table in this particular case. I'm also using the table in this case for um, an understanding of like stratigraphy or thinking about things from like a, almost a vertical timeline or yeah. A, 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 yeah. They're, they're called timetables, essentially. Um, in that particular piece, um, that's, that is a, a piece that I think is very um, similar to like a large body of work that I created that was basically using this, this vocabulary of still life with on a table format and then um, you know, creating relationships between different objects and having them dialogue between each other. Laid Table with Fish specifically um, continues to be rele relevant for me because uh, there's just so many different layers of symbolism behind that, that particular um, animal, the fish. So there's like proto-Christian symbolism, there's obviously Christian symbolism, there's also the fact that we're emptying our oceans of, <laughs> of fish and we're living through the sixth extinction, essentially. And then we also have invasive species like Asian carp. And so it's also like a symbol of plenitude, but it's also really um, depleted of, of the, the tangible because it is clear. Um, you can see through it. It's, it's there, but it's kind of elusive. It's not there at the same time. So I think it works on many different levels. And, you know, no matter how large or small the compositions are, there, there are margins um, that the piece changes every time. It's a living sculpture, essentially. So every time it's disassembled and then reconfigured somewhere else, it's going to be approximately the same. I have templates that I work with, okay. but they're, they are different. It's going to change. It's going to be different every time. Like every single fern does leaf does not go next to every other fern leaf. So there it is an interpretation. 
and it will change especially depending upon who is caretaking. I think um, the way that I choose objects changes depending upon what my focus is in my practice at any given time. So in the case of the What Not One and What Not Two, the Black Sister pieces in the smaller gallery, um, the majority of the objects found on those uh, pieces are replicas of, of objects that I live with in my own home. So in some ways they're self-portraits and then on top of that, I kind of included as, you know, depictions of the human body, like you'll find a heart and a foot and a head on those pieces. So I'm interested in kind of blurring those lines between utility, um, body, still life, um, you know, like, like furniture as a metaphor for body, that kind of thing. So there's different things that drive me for each piece. Um, the laid timetable with SciCAD, I was very much interested in creating essentially like an abundant composition on the top that was primarily human made and then have um, the, the floor literally be almost history like paleo, a paleo landscape or a fantastical landscape of what a paleo landscape, landscape might have looked like. So for me, that was, very, that was like what drives the composition. And then from a formal concern, of course, I'm, I'm concerned with many things that all other kind of artists ultimately either embrace or abandon in terms of like a historical approach, like, you know, mass, vol um, texture, volume, scale, density, like moving your eye around and creating a dyna dynamic environment. So. A you know, the composition becomes really important just formally as well. It's like I knew that I wanted this particular table to be pierced so that there was like a perpetuity of life that was literally growing up through, permeating through the table and shedding over the cultural objects. So that was the starting point of where I wanted to place things on the, on the composition. If you continue to make things, you will be one of the very few people that continue to make things, which sounds really simplistic, but it's actually, I think, the hardest thing. Um, because our society isn't exceptionally supportive, I think, of the arts. That's probably a huge understatement, but, <laughs> you know, so I think you, yeah, you have to carve a way to do it if you really are driven to do it. And it's, you're in a very supportive environment if you find yourself in school for making art, but once you leave that foundation, um, it can be very difficult to continue. Yeah.